back for another uh, video segment and uh, it's a long weekend here in Canada so I figured uh, I reach out to Tesla and they were very kind to uh, put me into a Model S for the long weekend so I figured I would uh, take it for a little road trip with my wife and I and give you an opportunity to, to uh, follow along with my impressions of the vehicle so uh, anyways here it is let's check it out look so it's a 2015 Model S it's an 85 it's not dual motor or anything like that but other than that it's fairly loaded has um, autopilot version 1 and uh, let me see here what else does it have oh it has the uh, tan leather interior which is really quite nice uh, the little orange stickers are blemishes they have to fix that up because they literally just took it in on a trade they haven't done anything i just took it for a bath on their behalf um, air suspension uh, premium sound system sunroof um, let me see here what else well, I can't remember all the features and stuff. I'll, I'll post the specs on the video later so you can check it out. Anyway, so a big thanks to Tesla for letting me use this car on the long weekend and uh, gives us an opportunity to give us our, our impressions. So far, I just drove it from Tesla. And um, you know what? If the Model 3 is three quarters of the speed of this car, you guys are going for a real treat. This thing is a lot of fun to drive. Anyways, um, let's go on a trip and see how it, uh, how it goes. So it's the next morning after our short... Uh uh, road trip. We did about 130 kilometers up to uh, cottage country, uh, about 90 miles for those of you on the Imperial system. <laughs> Anyhow, I uh, just wanted to give you a few observations about uh, driving this car. Um, really, it's actually, it's, it, you get used to the car very quickly. Um, the size of the vehicle is, uh, you know, kind of average for this size of sedan. Uh, the only time I really found any kind of problems with re really realizing how big the car re uh, was uh, when you go to park. Uh, at that point, it becomes kind of obvious in some respects how big the car really is. Other than that, in driving, it's actually really great. Um, didn't have any issues uh, with getting used to the user interface and stuff. Um, now, I do have some opinions about this particular car. This is a 2015, so I'll go over uh, a couple of those things. All right, so on this particular car, it's a 2015 and it has the old style seats. And um, I found these to be, especially in the bolster area here on the sides, not effective at all. It's These seats are not comfortable. Um, now it doesn't really matter if you buy a newer car, uh, this, the seats are much better quality, um, get much better support. I found myself sliding around in the seats. And up here, there's not much on the sides, and especially here in the front. So on long trips, I, can, I could tell right away that these seats were not getting very comfortable. I'll talk about the quality of the, of the part. I, I find the quality of the materials in the car to be quite nice. This is all soft touch. This is leather. This is um, some kind of material. Maybe it's even leather wrapped. I'm not 100% sure. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk over the years and times for people thinking that you know the Model S really should have a nicer interior. Having said that, however, I think that the quality of the materials of this of this car is uh, more befitting for a car maybe in the Model Three category. So, if the quality of the uh, of the of the materials um, are exactly like this in the Model 3, it'll be perfectly fine. I'd be perfectly fine with that. I can understand that some people may find that uh, the interior finish and some of the stuff on, on, on a car of this value is, is not is not the best. And, you know, that's okay. I don't have a problem with that particularly. I like the simplistic interior. But if you ever get a chance, you really should take one of these cars on, um, on a longer drive because it would give you a, a better understanding of, of how things work. Uh, but the problem I find usually with, with the Model S, if you take one for a test drive, it's you're only in it for you know 15 or 20 minutes, and that's not a good enough impression. But uh, I felt instantly comfortable with the car. It's really nice. Now, I, I will say this. Um, if the performance of the Model 3 in the most basic configuration <laughs> is as good as this, uh, we're going to be in for a real treat. This car has more than enough oomph. It's just a plain... 85 uh, it's not uh, a dual motor or anything like that and it has plenty of power if i need to pass somebody or get up and go uh, i've driven a p90d with ludicrous before and uh it has a, a real punch in the gut kind of feeling you don't get quite as much with this uh on this particular car but uh it, you know the performance is more than adequate i really drove this car like a miser like a little grandma you can see our trip here 
yesterday was 143 kilometers on an average 172 watt hours per, per kilometer. Uh, and like I didn't drive it like a madman or anything, but I was kind of babying it. Um, anyway, so it was, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Uh, there's our current trip. We have 219 kilometers. Uh, the supercharger that's closest to me right now is about 40 miles or some 60 kilometers away. So uh, I'm going to be careful when driving around because w in the area I'm in right now, there are no level three high speed chargers anyway. Everything's level two. Matter of fact, at the condo I'm staying right now, I couldn't even plug it in last night because there's just nowhere to go. So wherever we happen to go today, I have to kind of baby it a little bit. But uh, driving up, I had no range anxiety whatsoever. It was, it was. I didn't even think about this. Now, obviously, on the Model S, you've got this area here, which shows you your, you know, your speedometer and stuff. And of course, with the Model Three, it's going to be a 15-inch screen. Now, in my opinion at this point, I was kind of thinking about this when I was driving the car yesterday. That uh, as nice as this screen is. Um, I was starting to think, you know, I was imagining while I was driving, um, you know, what is the 15 inch screen going to be up here? I think with the lack of a binnacle here and having the speedometer right about here, it'd be perfectly fine. Um, matter of fact, when I'm driving in traffic, I don't even look at the speedometer. I'm just going with the flow of the traffic. So it's not something, but being literally right about here, um, I don't think that's gonna be an issue. The one thing that's actually quite nice with the 15 inch screen being in this area is that it would give the passenger, and this is something that Tesla has mentioned before, uh, last year in the test ride drives was the passengers will have better access to the screen for things like infotainment and that's the one thing that we were doing yesterday is we were playing around with the different um uh, where is it here i'm still not used to certain things here we go uh so yeah the infotainment system and um uh, and my wife was trying to use the interface and she found it confusing and, and I find this interface I mean they're trying to emulate iTunes a little bit and I'm not crazy about it because I find it uh, you know just on a cursor examination it's it's you can't get around very easily um, while you're driving um, I, I mean you have voice controls here on the um, on the control and that takes some getting used to and it, it works once you understand how it works but um, this user interface I think hmm yeah not crazy about that other than that, I mean, getting around and using, you know, the navigation system on it here is, is fantastic. I like that. I mean, being able to zoom in and zoom out and get around, that's really nice. I expect that to be on the Model 3. That's really not going to be any different. Most of the user interface on the Model 3 is just going to be sideways rather than vertical. So I, I really don't expect a lot of changes on there. Um, at some point, they'll probably unify the interfaces together to make it, you know, a little more consistent. Anyhow, um, those are kind of quick opinions right now at this point. We'll have more to say as we uh, as we drive around. Just want to make a quick mention about the trunk on the uh, Model S. For those of you who don't know this, that uh, underneath this this slip cover here is is a well in the bottom. There's lots of storage space. The recently seen picture uh, from the Tesla um, body shop repair manual shows that this well is indeed intact on the Model 3. So those of you who are complaining about trunk space really won't have any issues because we're going to get the same well. Now, of course, it's not quite as long of a car, so we're not going to get quite as much um, storage area in here, but uh, we'll still be able to put the seats down. Now, this is one of the things I've never shown on one of my videos before, but this is the universal mobile connector. This is what comes with the car. Um, I suspect we're going to get the exact same thing with the Model 3. This is the part here that goes into the car and the charge port on the side. But in North America, we have different adapters, of course. This is the other end of the, of the UMC. This is the part that goes in the wall, but what you need to do is put an adapter on. So let's ignore this for a second. So this is your standard 110, 120 volt outlet. So if you're a sucker for punishment, this is what you're gonna use in the car, it clicks in like that. So you can plug this in anywhere, charge the car. But if you want good speed, you really need this one right here. This is the NEMA 1450. And that goes on the end of the adapter and that gives you your 220 so that's why these adapters are removable however if you're out and about and you want to use a level 2 charger you use this little adapter so this is the part that goes into the charge port on the car and this end here you plug in the j1772 adapter which uh, this is included with the car so you can use any public charging station with the tesla um i don't know if i'm going to find one here in town but uh Anyways, just wanted to show you these uh, different adapters you get with the car. Well, since this is a plain uh, 85, uh, it's not the dual motor, so we have the older style. So this one has the older style, larger frunk, and it has, you know, the old microwave oven in there. So um, 
Now the Model 3 is gonna have a frunk as well, but it's gonna be shorter, narrower, and much shallower. Um, hopefully we get a chance to see that when we go down to the factory and check out the prototype that they have. So at least we still get a frunk. It's just not gonna be quite as big as this. By the way, this is my wife, Beverly. Say hi to the viewers. Hello, everyone. Hi, right, everybody. Uh, she doesn't, she's not normally in the videos all that much because it's mostly me, but you might see her a little bit more. This is the last day of us using the car for the weekend, courtesy of Tesla, so thanks for that. Um, just wanted to give you a little bit of some observations now. We've had the car for, what, two and a half days now? Something like that. Um, so just as a reminder, this is a 2015 uh, Model S, 85 kilowatt hour battery pack. It's a single motor in the back. This is not all wheel drive. It's not performance. It's not ludicrous. Um, it's fairly well equipped. It has um, air suspension, the panoramic roof, uh, the premium sound system. Um, there's no center console on this car, so it has the older yacht style floor, which I kind of like. Um, some of the observations we made is that, uh, oh, I checked the, uh, the Tesla website, and this car is rated uh, 0 to 60 miles per hour, 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in 5.4 seconds. And we were driving around yesterday with uh, Marge and Mark, and even with four adults in the car, uh, the performance was, was exceptional, <laughs> I thought. Um, you know, according to what Tesla has been saying that with the Model 3, the performance, even the base model will do that kind of performance in less than six seconds. Now, we don't have the exact details, but I'm here to tell you that even if you don't order a car with performance or all-wheel drive, um, on a car that's smaller and lighter, the performance is going to be more than adequate. I mean, we're doing 87 kilometers an hour right now, and if we just punch it, oh, yeah, you get those butterflies in your stomach, so she likes that. So let's talk about impressions about this car in relative to what we're going to be seeing with the Model 3. Um, the first thing I should note with this car is that the front seats at least are the older style, not the next generation or even the basic textile seats. These are leather and um, yeah, there's not a lot of bolster in these so that when you're um, kind of moving around, it, it, you tend to slide around like that. Now I've looked at the seats on the Model 3. Um, on the Alpha prototype, I'm pretty sure those are the same ones that are going to go into production because everything about the car seems to be that's, excuse me, what the case is. Uh, they should be much, much nicer, much nicer seats. I'm hoping that when we go back to, when we're back at Tesla and we turn the car in, we'll be able to chance to to check out the seats on the newer cars. And uh, your opinion, thumbs up or thumbs down on these seats? Thumbs down. Thumbs down. These seats are not very good. Now keep in mind, uh, they've changed the seats on all the new Model S's and the Model X's. They're much, much better. Even if you don't buy leather, the textile seats are really great. I've driven a car with, uh, with those seats and they're much, much better. So even though if you're looking at a used Model S, pay attention to the seats. You may or may not like these. I think we find that for long trips, especially with you know the lack of bolsters and especially under your legs here, there's not a lot of support. So um, not very comfortable long trip. So I'm hoping that uh, that they correct that. <clears throat> well, not correct it, but of course on the Model 3, you're gonna get better seats, of course. Uh, what are the other things? Well, we talked about performance, right? Performance is gonna be, well, let's say folks, if a Model 3 is 80% as good as this car is, you're in for a real treat. This is, this is a spectacular car to drive. Um, as far as getting in and actually using it, um, I don't know if it's just me because I'm already very familiar with the car from watching Tesla for the last you know 10 years. But I felt very instantly comfortable with this car. The screen, um, there's a few little things that, that could use some improvement. I find that the media system on here, um, from a touch user interface, trying to navigate while you're driving is pretty bad, but at least you get voice control, and that's your favorite feature, right? You like that? Yes. Yeah. Uh, being able to just press the button, just call up any song with streaming in it, and it just works. That's, that's a really nice feature, I like that. The navigation system on this is really good. You'd be able to pinch and zoom. Uh, of course, with the Model 3, it's going to have a 15-inch screen. It's much higher. On this one, with the vertical screen, you get used to it, 
But in some ways, I think with the 15-inch screen being uh, horizontal and up here, and especially it's not tilted towards the uh, driver so much, that passengers will have better access to the system. So I think that's a good decision on their end. Of course, when we get it or we get a chance to check out the cars in person, we'll have a better opinion of that, but I think it's a good decision. Um, from driving the car, the visibility out the front and the sides is pretty good. Uh, it's pretty well known that the visibility out of the back of the Model S is not the best, especially with the passenger or with the middle seat in the back, with the headrest being so high, it kind of blocks the view a bit. Um, I've looked at pictures of the uh, Model 3 production candidate, and the middle headrest um, in the back seat is um, is a retractable type, so it's actually sit flush. So that hopefully should be an issue. Um, you get used to it, but at least with this car, you can pull up the um, you can just pull up the back camera, and I know a lot of people like to do this when they're driving, so that you get a live view, high definition live view out of the back of the car. So that's kind of a nice feature. I expect to see that on the Model 3 as well. So that's uh, that'll be a nice little bonus. Um, I don't expect the user interface really to change all that much on the car. Um, you know, the the screen along the bottom, the buttons we've seen, and some of the prototypes along the bottom. So it just be a little bit easier reach. One thing that I've noticed here is because, um, you know, on the Model S, you get an instrument panel here in front of you, and that, of course, that's not happening on the Model 3, is that we're going to end up with a lower dash. And um, when I get a chance to see the, the, the Alpha prototype, the dash should be pushed much forward. So it should have a more airy feeling on this car. I don't feel from driving this car over the last two and a half days that it feels particularly big. The only times you notice when this car is big, and you know, of course, after we get to the supercharger, you can drive it, is um, when you when you uh, go to park the car, or when you do uh, tight turns because the turning radius on this car has a long wheelbase, so the turn ba uh, the turning radius is not the best. So even at full, you know, wheel lock left or right, you you feel like you know it it takes a lot to turn the car. And I've watched a lot of the. Uh, the Model 3 reveal videos online and uh, you can tell it has a very tight turning radius so it should make the car feel a little more nimble but other than that I felt very very comfortable getting to this car getting used to the user interface one pedal driving is fantastic on this the only time you find using yourself the brakes is when you come to a stop if you're still rolling but if you time it right you may not even need to use the brakes all that much so uh, that doesn't take very long to get used to it's quite nice I don't know what the um, steering stock controls are going to be like on the Model 3. It's very apparent that it has two. This one has three, one for the autopilot, one that controls your gear shift lever, and the other one has all the controls for the uh, windshield wipers. And that took some getting used to turning on the windshield wipers because it's, you know, normally on a car, the windshield wipers, you know, you press it up or down. And this one, you got to twist everything. And um, I'm, I'm used to it now, but when you first get into this car, Especially if you just do a short test drive, like if you go to test drive a Tesla, or whatever, you're usually out for 15, 20 minutes, maybe half an hour tops. Um, it takes a while to get used to the controls, so I don't expect you to become instantly familiar with that. But um, it took me the better part of, I think, Friday to get kind of used to that. And I was still dinking around with them on Saturday, so um, I don't know what they're going to do with Model 3. The uh, steering wheel on the Model 3 has two scroll wheels here. But this Model S has extra buttons. Um, they don't seem to be present. Now, you, you can push on these, and you can bring up different features. Like you can see here on the screen, you can scroll up and down, and there's a push button function on the scroll wheel. Um, but I don't know, I don't know what, how they're going to get around these two buttons and stuff on the Model 3. Um, I know there's been a lot of talk on the Internet about these spaceship controls and stuff, but that's not happening, folks. Forget it. Uh, that was a tweet that Elon did, and uh, they never pursued that. The steering wheel, uh, probably put a picture up so you can see it. This is the final steering wheel that's going into production. I'm 99% sure of that. So we'll see how that happens. Um, this is a flat bottom steering wheel. It's, it's nice. It gives you a little bit of leg room. Do we have to go left here? Yeah? Okay. So far, it's so good. Um, any observations on your end? You got it on full? I don't know. Can you feel? I don't even have mine turned on. You've got it on full three? It's a bit cool today. I've been calling it, so we uh, put the heated seats on. I'm feeling it, but it's it wasn't an instant heat. Yeah. And my VW, it'll burn your butt off. This one, comfortable, yeah. but not extreme. Any other observations? I mean, you haven't driven the car yet. Well, I'll give you the opportunity in a little bit. Back seat's more comfortable than the front seat at this point. 
I drove in the back like yesterday quite a bit. How'd you find the headroom? I mean, you're not, you're what, 5'7"? Yeah. How'd you find the headroom in the back? Um, you're getting close to being to the top back there, but it was fine. Now, we do know that the Model 3 has a taller roof line than the Model S does, and it goes back further than this does. So I don't anticipate... I've, I've talked to some people that actually were in the um, uh, prototype cars at the test drive event, and they were six foot plus, and they said that headroom on the car was not a problem. So if you happen to be in a Model S sometime and sit in the back and you find that it's short, I don't think it's going to be a problem on the Model 3 because of the way that it's designed on the back window. Um, let me see here. What else did we do? We had a little bit of sunshine. Was it yesterday or Friday? Friday? How did you find the heat coming out of the sunroof? Any problems? Didn't feel like it. No. It was... and that's a common uh, question that we get a lot because of all the glass is, you know, how much heat is coming through and um, didn't notice anything. You do notice the heat, of course, if you open the sunroof, all the heat comes in in the sun, but it, never a problem. I don't find it to be a problem and I don't anticipate. I, I And then, don't forget, the, the glass treatment on this car predates everything they've been doing on the Model X and, of course, the new all-glass roof on the Model X. Um, on the new Model S, as well as the new back glass on the Model 3, so uh, the coatings on that are going to be even better, so I don't think that's ever going to be a problem with anybody. If you're concerned about that, you know, I don't think it's going to be an issue. How do you like the performance of this so far? It's yeah? It's decent? Yeah, you're a roller coaster nut though, right? Yeah, you like that? Uh, lead foot. Also. Yeah, yeah, you're a lead foot too. Shh, don't tell anybody. She drives away fast. I'm a grandma. Like, I mean, we drove up here, and I took a look at the uh, the trip meter here. And I'm averaging, since last charge, my I'm, I'm averaging about 181 watt hours per uh, per kilometer. So I drive like a miser on this car. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, I think you're going to be a little bit more of a lead foot <laughs> than I am. But, again, I just I think if we reiterate, if you're thinking that you need all-wheel drive to get performance, uh, I'm here to tell you, you don't. This car has more than enough oomph. Now, all-wheel drive will certainly help you in the winter months um, if you need a little bit of traction in the snow and stuff, but we, we really don't get that much snow to be really concerned about it here. I mean, it might be different if you live in Buffalo or something, uh, or Minnesota, or, you know, sometime, you know, somewhere in maybe, what, Calgary? You know, you get a lot of snow. Edmonton, right? Yeah. Yeah, Edmonton. Um, so the traction control would be good, but the only time I can really see that the all-wheel drive would be good, uh, other than traction control, would be like those instant launches, you know, from a from a standstill. But you don't tend to do a lot of that. It's mostly when you need to pass somebody on the highway. Like yesterday, we went to dinner and we were po we were following a guy in a Porsche, and with four adults in the car, and we decided to just see what it could do. We just passed him, and I just stepped on him. We were like in and a blink, we were right past him. So, uh, yeah, the performance, I think, even on the base Model 3, like Elon said, is going to be more than fast. Of course, with performance options, maybe a little all-wheel drive, bigger battery pack. I don't know if battery pack really matters all that much as far as performance is concerned. But, um, yeah, I, I think everybody would be very happy, even the most base configuration. Um, the best places for you to put your money, of course, with a car is a big battery pack. Like I said, this one has an 85 kilowatt-hour battery pack. And our... What's the distance between our place and here is what, 140 kilometers? Yeah. Absolutely no range anxiety whatsoever. I mean, we did, and, there, and there's no high-speed chargers where we were. There's no superchargers, there's no Chatamo. Um, the best you could do might be a level two somewhere, and we happened to go to the hotel at the Westin, and they have a couple, no, four, four Tesla um, destination chargers, and they were 40 amp, and we were just walking around. Uh, in the afternoon having some lunch and just enjoying the sights and we just plugged in the car and came back and it added what 70 80 kilometers something like that uh, It was perfectly fine and I'm, I'm looking at the dash now and I still got 240 kilometers to the left and more than enough to get us home Where we need to go, but we're still gonna stop at the supercharger on the way to to show you guys an experience of what that's all about but absolutely no range anxiety um, I know a lot of people make a big deal about it, but I, I haven't experienced anything. Actually, my most my range anxiety was yesterday when the when my phone battery was running low. Um, but other than that, it's been it's been really great. Of course, if you drive like a maniac and you're doing launches all the time, you're going to go through your battery pack a lot more. But if you just drive the speed limit or um, or according to what traffic is, that nah, shouldn't be an issue at all. Um, didn't really run the climate control at all. It wasn't really any need to. I have it turned on right now. Uh, let me see here. What do we have? 
nothing really. Just comfortable 22 degrees Celsius. You got your seat warmer. Oh, yeah, it's a little bit warm. I haven't turned mine on. Um, outside, it's showing 13 degrees Celsius today. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit. I'm not good at that conversion. 60. 60? Well, no, it's got to be less. Well, 50, 55. 50 is 10. So 55? Yeah. 56? Somewhere in that vicinity? And perfectly comfortable in the car. Again, we're in the spring, so we don't really have an opportunity to drive, drive this in the winter and see what the light, uh, what it's going to be like. Um, I would anticipate some range reduction in the winter because of the colder battery pack, but this time wasn't an issue. Oh, I know one thing. I was wondering about the vampire drain. People talk about this vampire drain if you leave the car running for any length of time or sitting, that it eats the battery. And um, my only concern, I was, I was not a concern, but I was really curious in the morning when we went out and looked at the car to see how much uh, uh, that it drained the battery overnight. And I didn't notice anything. It was the same thing as soon as I got up in the morning. So at least in the warmer weather, I'm, I'm not worried about that at all. How do you feel about the fit and finish in the car? Simple. Simple? Do you like that? Classy. Classy? Maybe a little no. oversimplified. But... Oh, yeah. Oh, I'll wait till you see the Model 3. <laughs> it's even simpler than this. But you think the quality of the materials are okay? Do you think that the interior of this car, as far as the fit and finish on a Model S, costing over $100,000 Canadian, is is adequate? Or should it be a little more Mercedes luxurious? I think they could have went a little bit more luxurious. Yeah? Depends how simple you want to be. My personal opinion, after playing with this car, like all the materials inside the car are semi-soft touch, like the dash. Uh, the leather and stuff. I think that this interior, if they put this interior in terms of, of, of um, materials in the Model 3, they'll be bang on because I think the materials in this car, not the design, but the materials um, is more befitting of a car around that, that price range. Um, personally, I don't mind the interior on the Model S. I think it's nice. It's simple. The materials are adequate. But I know, I can understand, I get it. A lot of people would say that it really should have a better interior. Uh, now Tesla, we know we've hired a guy from Volvo who's responsible for engineering of interior. So I would expect the Model S will get an interior refresh sometime. But um, yeah, no, it's perfectly fine. I know a lot of people like it, the simplistic interior. Did you say there was going to be a pocket in the door? Yeah, yeah, let's talk about that. So Model S has no pockets in the door. It's awful. Awful. <laughs> now they fixed that. They put them into the... Here, i got to turn on the windshield wipers. Um, they did fix that in the Model X. It has pockets, at least in the front doors. And I do know that Model 3 has pockets in the doors in the front and the back. So that's not a concern. They've learned from that. But yeah, this, this interior, I mean, there's nowhere to put a bottle. And the cup holders are in the worst place possible. They're, they're like right here. Oh, God, that's horrible. So, and I know in the newer cars, they've added a center console with a couple cup holders and you can move things around. But... I'm torn with that because I, I like this yacht floor where you can put a lot of junk. Like we've got, I mean, we're just using the car for a couple of days. We already got a bunch of junk in here. <laughs> That's where Avanix comes in. To play. Oh yeah, my, well the guys at Avanix, yes. <laughs> um, but it's nice, you, you know, you can put your purse there, and there's a little cubby here. I forgot my phone there a couple times already, so um, yeah, it's, it's not bad. I like, you know, kind of like it. Of course, the Model Three has a full console, so it has cup holders up more forward and a couple of cubbies. So, uh, yeah, you know, we're not going to get the flat floor in the front, but we'll see how that works out. Vanity mirror's a little bit small. Yeah, and that's no one light. thing. Yeah, I know, yeah, there's no lights in these, um, in these vanity mirrors. They're quite short, and that's mainly because the roof line comes down to about here, and you can't have them really long because you can only put the seats down so far. So they've got these dinky little, yeah, visors. They're not the best. The one thing I don't like about this particular car is with the light headliner, there's a lot of scuff marks. I mean, this car, I think, is off-lease, and whoever had it probably didn't take as good care of it. So there's a lot of little stains and stuff. I would much prefer to have a black headliner on it, because then you don't see anything. But I like a lighter color interior for the seats. I'm hoping on the Model 3 that we'll have an option for, like, a vegan leather or gray or something like that. I know you like the gray. I'm not a big fan of all black interiors, but I'd really like to have the black headliner and some kind of lighter colored seats if it's available. This car has, uh, I should mention, this car has Autopilot version one, not the two, because it is a 2015. 
and uh, I like it. Uh, it took me a little bit of getting used to, but uh, you know, turning it on right now, now it's telling me the speed limit here is 80. I'm doing about 85, but it's yeah, but it, it's it, it works good. It's the lane keeping works. It's nice. Um, you know, it's not full self driving and stuff, but for long stretches, there goes the uh, thing. Give it a little shake there, and she goes away. Come on, there you go. The one thing I notice is that I tend to drive with my butt. Here, I'll just turn it off here. More like, um, I know you can't see out the front of the car here, but I like to have it more, a little bit more to the left or to the right of the median. And I find autopilot tends to hug the side of the road on the right-hand side a little bit more. I think maybe it's just an illusion because the car is a little wider than what I'm used to. We'll see what kind of advancements they make with autopilot version two, but... I, I could certainly get used to it. It's just, it's just a familiarity thing. I'm not too worried about that. So your opinion so far, would you buy this car used? Would you like this car? Not this particular one, but probably. Not this particular one? What about this? What is it about this one that you don't like? Or is it just because it's used? No, I just think without the pockets and mm. some of the other things, it just doesn't feel like what I would pay for. I They're see. Missing. A few things are missing. I see. I like the X we were in down in Florida. Yeah, you like the Model X, don't you? Not the doors. Just I the, don't like you, the doors. You just like the interiors better, yeah, isn't it? It was a comfortable the, car yeah. to sit in. and uh, The interiors felt better. more polished. I yeah, guess. it is. Yeah. Yeah, that, I would have to agree with you. The interior on the Model X is better than the Model S, only because it's just newer and they've spent, you know, they've added some more stuff to it. I think it's a little better. Yeah, this is a pre-facelift model, so it doesn't have that nice new... You like the newer look, don't you? Yeah, everybody seems to like the newer look. I know it was controversial at first when they got rid of the, the fake nose cone on the front. Everybody flipped out. It took them a while to get used to it. But everybody that I've shown the car to, and we were in um, at the hotel yesterday charging the car, and there was another car there with a the facelift, and our friends were like, whoa, that one looks so much better. And I said, well, all they did was change the plastic on the front, and that's all it takes. There are some third-party... Um, uh, fascia front lift, uh, facelift kits available. So if you have an older Model S and you want the new look, you can just buy it. I think it's $3,000 US to buy the new fascia, then you have to get it painted. But if you're desperate to have the new look, you can certainly do that without having to trade in your car. I, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm warming up to the blue. This one is the like the dark navy blue. I know a lot of people have mistaken this color when they look at it. They think it's black because it's all it's that dark. The newer blue, the bl the lighter blue, is much much nicer than this one. I would certainly not get a black car. That's for sure. I know a lot of people like black and they they like to black out a lot of stuff. I'm not into that. What's your favorite color? What would you get? If I was buying my own car, yeah, they'd have to have a special green for me. Green? Yeah. I know a lot of people on the forum really want green. Jaguar green. Remember back in the '80s, Jaguar had a beautiful green. It was very like sporty. British racing British green. British racing green it was beautiful. Really? Well, Tesla did offer the Model S in a couple of discontinued colors early on. They had one called Sequoia Brown, if I remember correctly, and the other one was like a, a dark green. They're very rare if you can find them. Um, if I ever see one, I'll point it out to you. I have seen a couple of them. Or a really spectacular silver. Oh, right. hyper silver. Yeah, one of my friends there, Ian. Hi, Ian. Uh, he's in the uh, auto industry making wheels. And, and that silver finish that's on the Model 3 prototype, he, he's and I kind of agree with him, is a process called hyper silver. And my, he, he explains to me that the car is painted kind of a base black, and then they spray a silver on top of that. And uh, it helps highlight. It's a deeper silver than the production silver that we've been seeing. Um, it's a complicated process. It's expensive, so of course, doubt that's going to go into production. But I know a lot of people are saying, "Oh, you know, the the cars I've been seeing, you know, with the silver don't look the same." Any other color? Second choice. Red. Red, multi coat red. Not the signature red. No, I didn't. I don't like this. You didn't like the red. signature red. No. Okay. However, the police are very well uh, aware. I don't know. I think that's an color. urban myth. I don't think it is. Red attracts. Popos. Popo? <laughs> it attracts the popo, she says. <laughs> this is a quiet car. Well, when you're stopped, it's dead quiet. can't hear anything. But when you're driving, 
like I, I would equate the um, the amount of uh, noise inside of this car when you're driving is equivalent to our Lincoln because of the sound deadening. Like most of the stuff that you hear is wind and tire noise. Yes, we're going to go this way. Yeah, so if you pick the wrong set of tires, you could be disappointed with the amount of noise you hear. Because I know on my car, the tires are loud. The winter tires are really, really loud. Well, that's the tread, yes. And, um, and I know some I people... I find that very distracting. Yeah, and I know a lot of owners that have the 21-inch wheels. So if you order a car with larger wheels, they make more noise. And the ride is not quite as nice. Oh, I should mention, um, you know, I mentioned that this car has the air suspension on it. I can't tell the difference between this and coil. Um, and I know it has the ride height adjustment and stuff. So if that's really important to you uh, when you get into a, a driveway with geolocation and stuff, that's great. But otherwise, I would not spend the money on it. Nope, not at all. Not worth it. Um, what's the other thing I found that wasn't worth it? Um, premium sound system. I think this one is like 11 speakers in the car. I mean, it's got a nice sound system, but I'm sure third-party sound systems would be much better. Um, again, personally, not something I care about. I would not spend the money on that. This one does not have the heated steering wheel, but Canadian cars come with heated seats. I know sometimes the U.S. ones don't. Um, if you live in a colder climate, the cold winter package is certainly, I think, something you would want to spend your money on, provided it's not too expensive. Uh, it gives you heated seats in the back for passengers. But, I mean, the time, the, the amount of times we have passengers in the car is very rare. So creature comforts in the back, for me, is not quite so important. How do you find the storage space in the car? I was judging that this morning as to whether or not you'd be able to put four pieces of luggage to go to the airport comfortably, and mm -hmm. it looks like it would yeah, just it is fit. Big. Yeah, uh, it looks like you could put all four pieces in your carry-on and your two pieces of luggage. Yeah. And don't forget, this is the older car. It doesn't have the dual motor in the front, so the frunk on this one is the old-style big frunk with a microwave oven spot. So there's tons of room in the front of this car. Matter of fact, we're going to stop off at a um, at a garden center and pick up some stuff, and we're probably just going to throw it right in the front of the car. We'll see if we see if anybody in the um, in the in the parking lot notices. <laughs> We're putting stuff into the motor. What are you doing? What are you doing? Fixing your car? No, I'm just putting some flowers in, dude. I think the most disappointing part about the car is it's hard to get in and out of. Because I of the high door sills? I, mean, I don't know what it is, but both the back and the front seat, and I saw that Mark was struggling yesterday too. It's mm -hmm. not a... It would not be good if you had mobility issues to get in and mm -hmm. out of this car. Well, It's not an easy in or out. The Model X, I'll tell you, is much, much better because the uh, let's see okay the one thing if you ever get a chance to drive a Model S check it out because you'll notice is that the the door sills on the Model S are rather high and that's because of the battery pack being on the floor so it's yeah I agree with you getting in and out of the car yeah I mean it's something you get used to but that's when you're used awkward. to another car it's it's a little weird but um, I have a low car and my yeah. car doesn't feel like it's that much work to get in and out of yeah and the the rear doors on this car are rather short like they're not very long so the aperture the, the spot to get in and out of the car is a little difficult I would suspect the Model 3 is going to be exactly the same way I've measured I've done overlays with Photoshop <clears throat> with the Model S compared to the Model 3 and other than the wheelbase being about three inches shorter the cabin looks to be about the same size as as far as this way is maybe not the width of the car um, so I would suspect the back seat is going to be about the same if not maybe a little worse a little tighter on the Model 3 compared to this so be aware of that that back seat once you're in you're okay because it's got the flat floor probably wouldn't have challenges with small kids because they're tiny but. right car seats and stuff well i think that's one well again that's one of the reasons they did the model x with the crazy doors was really for Parents. soccer soccer moms and stuff that really want the model x is a people mover that's really what it is very comfortable one too we had a good time with the with the one in florida A lot of people that ask me about the Model X and those doors, and if you're parked close to somebody, how does it know to go up and not hit the car? Yeah. No matter what, if it's tight, can you get in, or do you have to do you have to back out before you get in? Like you have to have the summon in order to get out of those tight spots. Well, as long as there's enough room for the doors to open, they have sensors that prevent it from hitting the doors, and it's kind of hit or miss. Sometimes I've seen them open. They sometimes they open halfway, whatever. Yeah, I think there's some. I think Tesla's still working on the software on those doors. It's been a problem right from the beginning. I think that's a setback for for um, 
a lot of people. They want the SUV. Yeah. They have the money for the SUV, yeah. some of the folks I've spoken with, but they're very leery about those doors. They're un- very unconvincing. Which is one of the reasons I think that they're actively working on the Model Y, which is the CUV or the small SUV variant of a Model 3. And I don't think it's going to have those doors. It's going to have regular doors, but it's just going to be a taller SUV type vehicle and to, to fit that market. I know a lot of people want that. So if you're looking for that kind of thing, yeah, you're probably going to have to wait at least a couple of years before we see that car. Otherwise, you, you know, Model X would have to do at a much higher price, of course. I don't know. I would buy this car. If the Model 3 came in and uh, these came down in price, like they are coming down in price all the time, but I think the major thing you got to consider is that you can buy one of these Model S's uh, at a lower cost than this one is. This one here is listed on the Tesla Canadian site at $83,500. And this one has autopilot. There's a lot of them that are cheaper out there, but they don't have autopilot. And I know for a lot of people that autopilot's a very desirable feature, so it actually helps kind of float the cost of the car a little bit on the used market. Now, you know, in a year or so when the Model 3 is actually out and there's there's some volume out there, of course, these prices are going to keep coming down. So depending on where the Model 3 cost comes in compared to one of these being used, that might be, could be a wash. Keep in mind, you don't get rebates on used cars. So, you know, you're out of pocket for whatever you buy. I think for me, it's just going to be a matter of really looking at, like this car will not fit in our garage. We have a single car garage at home. It's just too bloody wide. It won't fit in there. The only way we could get it in and out of there would be use the uh, summon feature. We would not be able to open the doors. It's just too small. Our garage is too small, I should say. This car is too big. So again, our car, our second car always lives outside because yours sits inside the garage. But on those odd times when we need to put the car in, uh, it would be a pain, so the model this this car would not be a good choice for that. But I do like the cargo space on this, so we'll have to see what the what the trunk space is like on the Model Three. I know that the door that the two back seats fold down, and um, the aperture looks pretty good. But this isn't you know I mean, this is a lift back, right? So you got a lot of room to get in and out. We'll have to see how that goes. I know the front the front trunk on the Model Three is shallower and not quite as deep. So we'll have to see how that goes. Again, not everybody wants a bigger car like this. But uh, the people that, that do own them and need to move a lot of cargo, uh, I mean, this this thing's cavernous. You've got so much room. The two back seats fold down, 60-40 split. There's lots of room in this thing if you want to move stuff. Especially for us when on vacation because you like to pack with a lot of stuff, right? Take everything but the kitchen. Yeah, so. well, even then we'd have to take the stove sometimes because you like to bake and stuff, so... I am not braking. This is just regenerative braking doing its thing. If you time it right. Okay, now I'll apply the brakes to stop the car. There we go. Boom, just like that. So, brakes on this last a good long time because you're really not using them. One less thing to spend money on. See, this, these types of corners when you're going around, if you're going fast, this is when you feel when you're sliding around in the seat, I find. the etiquette. Oh, you bugger. What are you doing here? 3A, 3B. So we're going to go down. He's taking 3B, so we're going to take 4B. <clears throat> the reason you um, do it like this, and I'll show you why, is because they're in pairs. And if you plug in to the same unit as the other next guy, you get half the charge rate. Well, we just brought the car back to Tesla. So this basically concludes our little adventure. It's raining out today. Anyways, uh, great experience. Special thanks to Tesla for uh, letting us use the car. So that's it for this segment. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Model3Owners. 
Check out our forum at model3ownersclub.com. And uh, we also have a Patreon page. We appreciate if you take a look there. If you want to pledge and support and keep the channel going, you can find that at patreon.com forward slash model3ownersclub.com. And, uh, yeah, don't forget, we got some awesome T-shirts, too, to show off your Model 3 flair. So, anyways, uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next clip.